preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Sunday evening service coming to you from Mission Live GND. It's a pleasure having each and every one of you here present online and present for the blessing that is in store. But I do know that you would not want to keep this blessing to yourself. So even now, I ask that you like and share the page to tell a friend to invite a friend to this evening's service. This evening, as we continue in the Book of Daniel series, we'll be taking a pitch stop in Daniel chapter 2, where we see the story is told, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He was a king and he dreamed of an image of gold. This is a version of the story he told. He told it to Daniel, a mighty prophet of old. Daniel listened to the king, his image of gold. Nebuchadnezzar saw a beast rise up out of the sea. It was terrible and nasty and had ten horns with the name Blasphemy. The beast the king saw looked like a leopard. His feet were that of a bear and his mouth like that of a lion. And the beast received his power from a great dragon. That was a dream Nebuchadnezzar dreamed. And he wanted to know what it foretold, so he asked the prophet of old. I trust that each and every one of you will be blessed by this evening's program as we look at Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. But even now, before we begin, I ask you to bow your heads with me as I pray. Gracious God and eternal Father, we thank you for life and for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us this week. Bless us even now, God, as we're about to begin this service. I pray for your blessing in everyone's life that is present and that your spirit, O oh God, will lead, guide, and direct us. Continue, O oh God, to work your work in us, O oh Father, and help us to be molded more like you in all that we do. Bless us and keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll go straight into our song service this evening, which will be done by Sister Florin Gabriel, Flora Gabriel, and Francine Samuel, accompanied in music by Brother Hamish Daniel. All right. Pleasant good night to everyone. Welcome back to another Sunday night's service. And we will commence tonight's service with song service. We'll begin with song number 434, We Speak of the Realms, 434. We speak 
Take off the rims of the best land, country so bright and so fair, and of glory's glories confess. But what must it be to be there? We speak of its surveys of gold, its walls that with jewels so rare, its wonders and pleasures untold. What must it be to be there? We speak of its freedom of sin From sorrow, temptation and care From trials without and within But what must it be to be there? We speak of its service of love Of the robes which the glorified wear of the church of the firstborn above but what must it be to be there our morning is all at an end when raised by the life-giving word we see the new city descend adorned as a bride for our lord the city so holy and can breathe in the air, no gloom of affliction of sin, no shadow of evil is there. Do thou miss temptation and woe, for heaven my spirit prepare, and shortly I also shall know, and feel what it is to be there. Then bright fields we shall roam in glory celestial and fair with saints and with angels at home and Jesus himself will be there our next hymn will be 109 109 marvelous grace of the Lamb, redeemed. 
I sing for I cannot keep silence His love is the theme of my song song tonight would be song number 248 oh how i love jesus 248 Thank you very much, sisters and brother Hamish Daniel, for that special song service. It was indeed a blessing, and I know it set the pace and the atmosphere for this evening's service. And as we continue, we will now have our intercessory prayer, which will be done by Sister Sarana George. Let us put ourselves in a manner as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the breath of life. As we come before you this evening, we ask that you please forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. At this time, Lord, I ask that you help us to have the faith in you and to trust in you. Give us wisdom and knowledge from on high so as we live day by day, we can keep our eyes focused on you. Help us to remember that we need to have that connection with you, Lord. Help us to daily read your word and speak to you always so that we can always have you in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for being our deliverer, comforter, and friend. We thank you for your protection and for always providing for us. At this time, I want to lift up the online viewers in your hands. Lord, you know them by name and number. I bring them before you all the challenges that they may be facing at this time. It may be health, spiritual, family, or financial problem. Whatever they are facing, Lord, we ask that you take control and take all the problems that they are facing. Cover them with your blood, beat back the forces of darkness, and have your way in their lives. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort each 
viewing person here this evening and help them to realize whatever they are facing, that you are there making a way. Lord, continue to pour your blessing upon them. Lord, we thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for always being there for us. And we thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Sarana George, for interceding on our behalf. Our scripture reading this evening is taken from Daniel chapter 2, verses 24 to 25. And it reads, Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will shew unto the king the interpretation. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto thee your interpretation. Even now, we're going to have a special song by Sister Rafila Fletcher. Looking for answers, you need a way out. You've been trapped in that trial, full of sorrow and doubt. You saw a trickle of sunlight, but you found no escape. Just he said he'll make a way Make a 
make a way right on time. Right on time. Thank you, Sister Rafaela Fletcher, for that beautiful song. Our speaker for this evening, who will be expounding on the very interesting chapter of Daniel chapter 2, is none other than Pastor Samora Bess, Intern Pastor of the Western One District. So without any further ado, I invite you now to pay keen attention as he blesses our heart with From the Word of God. A pleasant good evening to everyone. First of all, let me say thanks to uh, the host for the kind words of introduction. I pray God's blessing upon you. And also, I pray God's blessing on everyone who would have um, participated in this evening's service thus far. You know, friends of mine, it is indeed a pleasure to be here uh, to present to you from the book of Daniel, the word of God from the book of Daniel chapter 2. Uh, this evening's message uh, is captioned, A Mysterious Dream. Uh, tell somebody, type it in the chat, man. A mysterious dream. Type it in the chat. Let someone know uh, the topic for tonight's message is titled, A Mysterious Dream. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love and grace. Father, as I'm about to present your words, may self be hid, dear Lord. May Christ be exalted. And may your name, Father, continue to be glorified. I pray, God, that you would speak through me as you were with me when I prepared this message. Be with me now as I speak to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. A mysterious dream. Dreams. Uh, what is a dream? Well, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a dream is a series of thoughts, emotions, ideas, and images that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. And the question is, have you ever dreamt something and when you awake, you, can't, you could not remember what you have dreamt? And you try spending some time trying to figure out or trying to recall, or trying to remember what the dream was about but to no avail? Uh, if your answer is yes, uh, then my friends, I can say uh, you're not alone. For there were many times when I also dreamt of something but could not remember it also. And, and I know that you know someone who would have had a similar or same experience. Uh, this is something that has been occurring uh, way before you and I were born. And if Christ does not come in our lifetime, many more will have a similar or the same experience as it relates to dreams. And the Bible tells us of a great king that had a similar encounter. Uh, he had a dream, the Bible says. However, in the, the, the dream troubled him that he awoke from his sleep, but he could not remember uh, the dream. Are you with me? He could not remember what he dreamt. And so his mind was troubled to the point where his sleep left. Are you with me? And so in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 2, beginning from verses 1 to 3, uh, we see King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, the Bible says. However, he could not remember what the dream was about. And so, my friends, I invite you at this moment as we take a read uh, from Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And the word of God says, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his, slept, and, and his sleep break from him. Uh, then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. Uh, so they came and stood before the king and verse, verse 3 says, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. 
Uh, brethren and friends, this evening, the word of God says uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, but he could not remember that dream. And so, my friends, Nebuchadnezzar, who believed in his magicians, who believed in his astrologers, who believed in his sorcerers, who believed in the Chaldeans, are you with me? The Bible says he called for his magicians, he called for his astrologers, he called for the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, but the Bible makes it very clear, if you continue to read the text, that they could not help him to remember the dream. Are you with me? In essence, he called for the soothsayer, but the soothsayer could not tell him the dream. He called for the magician, and the magician could not divine the dream. Are you with me? You see, my friends, uh, this was not an ordinary dream. No, no, no. This was not a dream because one would have overeaten. Are you with me? Uh, this was not a dream because of tiredness, my friends. No, uh, this was not an ordinary dream. As a matter of fact, this was a dream that was given by my God, are you with me? And because the dream was of God, my friends, no sorcerer or astrologer, nor could the magician tell the dream, because the author of the dream, uh, the author of the dream, they do not know, nor are they familiar uh, with the things of God, are you with me? And so the magicians, the sorcerers, the astrologers, they could not tell the king the dream because they do not know God. And so, my friends, today, if I should interject, uh, if I should interject here, as children of God, when it comes uh, to the things of God, no obia person can lead you in the way of God. Are you with me? No magician can lead you in the way of God. Are you with me? No palm reader could not, cannot lead you in the way of God. It is only God and God's people to lead someone in the way of God because they know God for themselves and they know that the word of God is true. Who are you with me? Because they are connected with Jesus. And when it comes to matters of life and salvation, our friends of mine, I encourage each and every one of you viewing tonight to seek God for yourself. Seek God for yourself. Are you with me? Seek God. God for yourself. Uh, study his words and pray to him. And God will give you clear guidance. And so friends, the story or the passage continue. These men, uh, it, it makes it very clear that these men, they were not able to tell the king the dream. And so he decided to have all the wise men kill. Are you with me? However, among those considered to be wise were four Hebrew boys. Are you with me? A Pastor George would have preached on these boys last Sunday evening. And you know them by name. As a matter of fact, amongst those considered to be wise was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are you with me? These men were the servants of God. However, they were not amongst the astronomers. Astrologers and magicians in the king's council, are you with me? But they would have suffered the same fate. Are you with me? But, but notice, these men, uh, there's, a, there's a marked or a stark difference between Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as it, com as it comes to them and the astrologers. There is a, a, a stark difference with them. Are you with me? Uh, these men, they understood that God is well able to give them the dream and not only can God give them the dream, they understood that God can also give them the interpretation thereof. By praying, they seek God's favor. 
And rightfully so, God came true for them in a mark and special way. And the dream came because the king was wondering, uh, the dream, are you with me? It had to do with the king. Uh, he was wondering what would become of his kingdom after his passing. And so when he, he, he laid it to rest, are you with me? God who knows the thoughts and intent of a man. God said, listen king, you're wondering what would happen uh, after you but here i'm going to give you a glimpse into the future and so in the dream the king saw a massive image made out of gold of different substance rather not just gold but of different substance as a matter of fact the image was had a head of gold a chest and arms of silver a belly and tie of brass a legs of iron and his feet a part of iron and part of clay massive image and so my friends God interceded, God interceded, and he gave a Daniel, are you with me? God interceded, and he answered the prayers of his faithful servants, and God gave Daniel the interpretation of the dream thereof. In, in essence, the king saw the image, he saw the head of gold, he saw the chest and arms of silver, he saw the belly and the tie of brass, the legs of iron and the feet of iron and clay but the thing left his mind but when God's servant called on Jesus he came true for them and he gave them the dream and the interpretation are you with me in a sense God did not give the dream back to the king the king but God gave it directly to his servants this time and in the image, the different substance represents uh, the different kingdom that ruled the world uh, during the period of earth. In essence, the head of gold, uh, it represents Babylon. Are you with me? History records uh, that indeed those kingdoms uh, represented in Nebuchadnezzar's dream did rule the world at some point in time. And so the head of gold, as I said earlier, it represents Babylon, which ruled the world from 606 to 538 BC. Uh, the silver aspect of the image represents that of Media Persia, which ruled the world around 533 to 331 BC. Are you with me? Uh, the, the brass element of the, of the image uh, represents Greece, which ruled the world around 331 BC to, six, to, to, to 168 BC. And the iron, which represents Rome, uh, ruled the world from around 168 BC to 476 AD. And so you may wonder, and well, preacher, you, you would have given a count uh, for, 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 for the gold, the silver, uh, the, 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 the brass, are you with me, and the iron. What is happening now? What is the account for, for, the, for the clay and the iron mixed together? Uh, with that being said, let me just say it must become very clear that we are living in the period of the iron and the clay. And the next big thing to happen is the mystery, the mystery of the dream, which is the stone being cut out without hands that will break the kingdoms of this world to set up an everlasting kingdom. Are you with me? Yes, my friends, we are now living in the period that is considered as the iron and the clay that is mixed together and anything else that should happen is God coming to set up his kingdom. The stone that is cut out without hands. The Bible says after the iron and the clay, uh, Daniel saw or the king saw rather a stone that was cut out without hands and it smote the image uh, and it destroyed the image but that stone became a mighty kingdom. Are you with me? And so First Peter chapter 2 and verse 4 says, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God, and precious to him. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this stone kingdom represents the coming of Jesus, who will come for his people. Are you with me, saints of God? And eventually set up his kingdom, his eternal kingdom. Are you with me? But, 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 but what does that mean for you and me? 
The question is today, my friends, what does it mean for you and me? As seen that we are living in the period that is mixed with iron and clay, what does that tell me as an individual or what should that tell you as an individual? Uh, it means that for those of us alive at this present time, we should be preparing to meet our Savior at any moment. Are you with me? At uh, any moment, the trump of God could be sown. And Jesus can burst the eastern sky to take his people home. Our friends of mine, the mystery of the king's dream is the fact that he could not understand this stone kingdom. But praise be to God, my friends, uh, we understand that this mysterious kingdom is God's everlasting kingdom prepared for those who have made their garments white in the blood of the Lamb. Somebody type amen. At this evening, my friends, the call goes out. The call goes out to each and every one of us. Uh, God is calling us. To be a part of his kingdom. God is calling us. To be a part of the kingdom that Christ has prepared for us. And today my friend. God doesn't want you to be destroyed with, 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 with the, those who do not know him. God is calling on each and every one of you. To make your calling an election show. Because just as the history records uh, uh, that that. Babylon ruled the world just as history records that, 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 that Media Persia ruled the world just as history records that Greece ruled the world and just as history records that Rome ruled the world. History must also recognize that it is God who gave that vision. It is God who gave that that, that dream to King Nebuchadnezzar. And just as all the elements came to pass with terrible exactitude, today I'm saying, friends of mine, we can put our pot on the fire and know that the day will come when Jesus Christ would make his entrance. The day will come when Jesus Christ is going to appear. The day will come when Jesus Christ would, would enter the earth's atmosphere with great power and glory to take his people home to set up his everlasting kingdom and just as uh, history shown history showed that all of those kingdoms rule the world it gives us the assurance my friends that we can trust the word of God you can trust the word of God because if history can give account for it, it tells me and it should tell you that God's word can be trusted. And so my friends, for those of us living in this period that is represented by the iron on the clay, my, my question to you today is, how are things with you and Jesus? Have you made Jesus Christ king and ruler and lord in your life? Are you with me? Today, my friends, I'm saying to us today, if you have not surrendered to Jesus as yet, the time is now. And so, brethren and friends, as we saw, the next great event to happen in earth's history is the coming of Jesus. Is the coming of Jesus. Is the coming of our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus. And for the Lord himself shall burst the clouds with a shout, are you with me? And it is those who, who, who know Jesus. It is those who have a saving relationship with Jesus. It is those who are wrapped up. It is those who are tied up. It is those who are tangled up with Jesus will be able to meet the Lord in the air when he comes. Are you with me? And so many of you might be saying, well, preacher, what is the benefits of signing up with Jesus? What is the benefits of wanting to be in Christ's kingdom? Well, I'm glad you asked. And that's the beauty of God. He never leaves a stone unturned. In essence, God answers every question that is in the human heart. 
And so in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 5, the Bible tells us John, the age apostle, as Jesus would have given him the message for the last day or the end of time, John in vision, the angel is showing or God is showing to John. And John says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. We're speaking about the stone kingdom. What would it be like? But John gives us a clear picture of what we can expect in that kingdom. Are you with me? For Jesus himself said he has gone to prepare a place for us. He told us that when he was on earth. And then he came and he gave John an insight into the kingdom or the place that he has gone to prepare for us. And the Bible says in Revelation 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. Yes, my friends, new Jerusalem are coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. For those of you who would have been married or who are married, rather, uh, the husband, you can can only um, shake your head and smile as you remember or as you reminisce on the time you looked at your wife coming down the aisle. The imagery here used by John is so rich, none can be compared to it because for me on the day when I got married, there was nothing else that my eyes was focused on even until now. But my wife, are you with me? Because she looked so good as she walked down that aisle. But I'm saying to us today, John is saying that God's kingdom is prepared as a bride, glorious in beauty and splendor, are you with me? Prepared for her husband. But not only does the kingdom look good, I understand in the kingdom there will be streets of gold. There will be walls of jasper and onyx and sardis and uh, different rubies and stones. Are you with me? Uh, There there would be sea as trans, the the streets would be as transparent gold. In, In God's kingdom, the lion and the lamb will walk together. And I long to be there. And do you long to be there? But not only will these things be, it says, and I, in verse 3, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Ah, oh, somebody needs to say praise God. And God himself shall be with them. Are you with me? Oh, saints of God, friends and mine, I want to be in God's kingdom because the Bible gives me the assurance that God, God's presence is going to be there. That God will be with us in the earth made new. That God is going to dwell with his people. Are you with me? Somebody type amen in the chat. Do you want to be there? I want to be there and I encourage each and every one of you to be there. Because God will be there. But not only will God be there. God will do something for us. Uh, The things of this life now causes us pain and hurt and tears and sorrow. But in heaven, in God's kingdom, are you with me? God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Are you with me? And there shall be no more debt, nor sorrow. And neither shall there be any more crying. And neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things shall pass away. Are you with me? No more debt, somebody say amen. And no more COVID-19, somebody say amen. And no more cancer, somebody say amen. And no more diabetes and hypertension, somebody say amen. I'm saying to us, saints of God, in heaven, in the kingdom that is to come, the stone that is cut out without hand, that establishes an everlasting kingdom, it is God's kingdom. And in God's kingdom, there will be no more debt. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain because the former things shall pass away. Ah, brethren and friends, and he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. As I look back on the earth's history, And the rulership of all those 
would have ruled this earth. Each and every one of them had their faults. Babylon had its fault. Medo-Persia has its fault. Greece has its fault. Rome, well, you know, has its fault. And presently, the system that governs this earth has its fault. But in the kingdom of God, it would be nothing but perfection. Are you with me? There will be no sin. There will be no pain. There will be no sorrow. There will be no dictatorship. Are you with me? There will be no corrupt and crooked leaders. Are you with me? But in God's kingdom, righteousness shall reign forevermore. And the beauty is those who surrender to Jesus will be in this kingdom. But those who choose to follow a life of sin, they will suffer the consequence of death because the stone will destroy all other kingdoms. And Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with brimstone and fire, which is the second death. In other words, my friends, anyone in whom sin is found, they would not be able to, to, to enter into that kingdom that is cut out without hands. Are you with me? I'm saying to us today, my friends, it is time for us as we live in the toenail of earth's history. Are you with me? It is time for us to be prepared for the coming of Jesus. And so the story is told of a young lady uh, that heard her parents speaking, you know. She heard her mom and, and neighbor speaking about the coming of Jesus. After she sat and she heard enough, the young lady suddenly left the presence of her mom and the adult and went upstairs. Uh, when she went upstairs, she took a bath and she changed her clothes and she went to the window and sat looking out at the skies. Her parents asked the baby, why are you, where are you, why, are you, why did you do that? The child responded, mommy, I heard you speaking about the coming of Jesus. And I just decided that I want to see Jesus. So I came and made myself ready. So that when Jesus burst the eastern sky, I will be able to see him for myself. A friends of mine, just like this little girl who thought it wise to make herself ready uh, to see Jesus today, my friends, this evening, my friends, God is counting on each and every one of you to make yourselves ready, are you with me? So that when Jesus busts the eastern skies, you will see him for yourself because you have lived for Jesus. And so today, as I bring this message to a close... Uh, my, my appeal is very simple today. Uh, Daniel chapter 2 tells us clearly that God's word can be trusted. Uh, Daniel chapter 2 gives us a clear understanding that it is God who is directing the affairs of this earth. And Daniel chapter 2 tells us clearly that God will come. And he would set up his kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. And Daniel chapter 2 also tells us that those who would be a part of God's kingdom and must be those who live for Jesus. And today, my friends, there may be someone who, who probably is viewing tonight. Uh, you may not have given your life totally over to Jesus as yet, but... Tonight, you would have heard the word of God, and you're saying, Father, I want to be a part of your kingdom. If that is your decision, there is a link in the chat. Uh, this evening, I ask you uh, to fill out, to click that link and fill out the information, and someone will get in contact with you. Whatever it is you need, whether it's prayer, whether it's you want someone to speak to, or if you're saying, Lord Jesus, I heard your words and I want to respond in loving obedience, this evening I'm saying to you, this is your moment. Click that link. 
uh, fill out the information, and someone will get in contact with you very soon. For those of us who have given our life to Jesus, if this evening after you would have heard the word, you want to say, Lord Jesus, help me to remain faithful so that at your coming, I will be amongst those who would make up your kingdom. If that is your decision, I just would like you to type amen in the chat. And as you're typing amen, I would say a prayer for you. And so at this moment, I invite you to bow your heads as I say a word of prayer on your behalf. Eternal Father in heaven, I will come before you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for your love and grace. We thank you for your tender mercies. Uh, dear Father, I pray, dear God, that you would be with that person who probably have not given their heart to you as yet, but this evening they heard your words and, and your spirit spoke to their heart, Lord, and they want to say, Father, I want to be a part of your kingdom. Please, dear God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, inspire them to reach out, to click that link, to fill out the information so that we can call them and, and, and set up to chat with them, to pray for them, or even to help facilitate their baptism and commitment to you. I pray, dear God, that you would give your angels charge and protection over them. Father, I also pray for the members who, after listening to this evening's message, they were convinced in their heart that they, they want you, their Father, to keep them along the straight and narrow path. I pray your blessings upon them. And I pray, dear God, that as they continue to live for you, that you would bless and keep them by your grace. Into your hands I place each and every one of us. Keep us, dear God, by your grace. Protect us throughout this week. And bless us, dear Lord Jesus. For this we pray in your name with thanksgiving. Amen. Have a wonderful night, everybody. And stay blessed in Jesus. Amen. And thank you, Pastor Samora Best, for diving into the book of Daniel, chapter 2, in our Book of Daniel series. It was indeed a joy and a blessing to hear from the Word of God. Before we leave, just a few announcements. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of power. Zoom ID 874-90-409613. Passcode 013-803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Upcoming events, Tuesdays we have Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and a rebroadcast will be at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. Followed by our Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. Join us next week at 7 p.m. on Mission Live GND as we continue the journey through the book of Daniel. We will be dealing with Daniel chapter 3. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. I pray it was a blessing for you. And I trust that you have a blessed week ahead. And in all that you do, that you put God first and trust in him. Even now, I ask that you bow your heads with me as I do the closing prayer. Gracious God and eternal Father, we thank you so much for this evening and all that transpired. Oh dear God, I pray that from this lesson we will learn to trust in you where we cannot trace you. Bless us and keep us even as we are about to begin this week. I pray that we will trust you more than ever before and that all our prayers will be answered according to your will and according to your grace. Bless us and keep us once more, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. to preach we are to
teach we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the